Hey guys, uh, this video is gonna be me showing you guys how I make my breeding pairs of shell dwellers, rock dwellers, Tanganyikans. Uh, this is what we do to select our pairs and just have them have the higher success rate for breeding them and having good uh, good parents. So what we usually do is if you could find a local breeder or somewhere online that you trust um, i recommend buying at least 10 10 to like 15 you could buy more if you want but we usually buy 10 to 15 um, juveniles that way they're young and once you get them home to your tank they start getting used to your water, the food you're feeding, um, just the way you care for your own fish. And that way you watch them grow, you watch their personalities, and just, uh, they start getting used to uh, your setup, your water quality, because it's not going to be the same water quality as the place they're coming from. So I'll use these uh, similes as example. These are still pretty young. Um, let's say you buy 10 of them. Throw them in a 10 gallon, a 20. Uh, I don't re recommend bigger fish tanks for them since they're small fish. A 10 is fine for grow outs or even the 20 gallons are fine for grow outs. But you got your 10, you're feeding them doing your water changes, doing all that normal fish care. Then they get to, uh, they start growing and they get to an, uh, young adults or adult size. Uh, they'll start pairing off by themselves. We let nature do its thing. We don't select one male and one female, throw them together, they're in a tank and hope they breed. That sometimes takes too long and for certain fish, uh, if the male doesn't like the female, the male will end up killing the female or other way around. The female will kill the male and then you're out one fish. You have a dead fish, which always sucks. So we just let, the, let them all grow out in the same fish tank. Throw in a few caves. We use PVC pipes with caps at the end and some elbows. You could uh, use uh, shells, but since we do a lot of breeding and a lot of selling, uh, sometimes it's pretty hard to get uh, shell dwellers out of uh, the shells because you can't take off the caps and throw them in the net. And with the PVC pipes, you can. And the PVC pipes, they work really good. You can see in here, there's quite a few pairs formed in here. And this one as well, both are signatas. Here's a pair that had eggs, but the uh, the babies either died or the parents ate them. But I'm just waiting for them to start breeding again. But back to the what I was saying, um, throw a few caves in there as you're growing them out. They will slowly start to pair off by by themselves. Yes, they're brothers and sisters. Usually you could get away with breeding them a few generations, let's say like three, four, and they'll be fine. As long as the place you're getting them from are good quality. You can tell by these guys, they're flaring up, they're pretty active, pretty aggressive, they're, they're good. Uh, I'll show you with these ones. These are Transcriptus eye bread. I have the parents over there. I'll show you guys in a minute. But they were all growing out. They're actually for sale. But if I could get a few more pairs, uh, that helps me out a lot. Because just in case my male gets sick and dies, or the female gets sick and die, dies, or someone kills each other, I'll have an extra pair. So these were all bred and raised here. I'll show you guys the parents later. And they grow out together and threw them in here, this 10 gallon. So I could start selling them off. But 
they start to pair off. I already took a pair out and separated them in a five gallon. And another pair has formed, which is, let me zoom in, those two. Those two have paired off. Uh, it doesn't look like they have bred or have laid any eggs yet, but they are uh, together. So once you grow them out, they become young adults. They usually start pairing off once they're that sub-adult size. Some have to be larger and then they'll start pairing out depending on how many fish are in the fish tank. That's why I like staying around 10, 10 fish as well with these lalupai bred and raised here but the parents of them died the male killed the female and then the male ended up jumping out so i have them together to see if they i could get some uh, to pair off that way i have more breeders because right now i don't have any breeders of the lalupai oops let me zoom out wasn't paying attention <coughs> but you uh, you wait for your pair to start going inside the caves similar to the signatas these ones on the bottom left you see I'll get close usually the female is the more protective she'll go inside and then the male comes next and then you can just put your hand over the the cave and you already have uh, your breeding tank you'll need multiple tanks if you really want to breed the shell dwellers or any fish really you have your empty tank with your sand and then you get your pair and you throw them in there these are brothers of those guys over there and these are the parents you throw them in there it'll take a few days for them to adjust to the new tank the new surroundings but since they're it's them too they don't have to be as protective as they were in the other thing where they have other fish they have to guard their nest and these right here these are babies from these guys there's only two only two survived he's right there and then these are the grandparents it's like this is actually a really good pair that's one batch one batch and then they just had a second batch like three weeks ago i think they even have a third batch inside the cave so there's three generations of babies in this tank that's why i like buying fish in like groups of 10 let them pair up by themselves because usually they're more bonded together and they'll take care of their babies together and I don't pull the babies till they're a little bit bigger probably that size the bigger ones I'll either pull the babies if it's easy enough if not I'll just move the parents once they go into the cave move them to, men, uh, to an empty tank like this one down here I'll take them a few days to readjust and then there's no babies because sometimes you'll get the bigger siblings will eat the smaller ones. And then sometimes the parents could get mad and eat the bigger ones, kill them basically. Or they just won't breed till the older fry get removed. Um, but usually my parents are pretty good. They could have two or three batches in the same tank. I've tried it with the Gola Slotas. Some of them can do it, but most could only care for one, one batch at a time. It's almost time for me to pull these guys and give them their own tank. That way they can start growing out. These are, this is my main pair of Helientas. These are their kids that paired out. And I think, uh, nope, yep, they don't have any babies yet. But when I had, in the old tank they were in, they were breeding already. And they actually had fry, but since they had, there was other fish inside of them, 
those other fish ate the babies these guys had so threw them out in their own tank these are signatas they had babies but they ate them so for these guys they're a little bit more picky depending on the pair you have they're a little bit more picky on their their babies so once i see that they're coming out of the cave i'm gonna pull the babies and put them in their own tank these are more signatas the pair is up here these are pretty good male that's the male the female is the one right by the cave but this is these are their kids and I feed all of mine uh, baby brain shrimp live and then the parents eat the uh, frozen mice shrimp but this is uh, the way I breed them might not work for you it's probably different from other breeders these are similis similis and multis are really good parents they could have multiple multiple batches in the same tank there's the, these big ones there's the medium one then there's smaller babies in there but yeah these are just five gallons small sponge filter a couple caves and you're all good these are another pair of carapuntares they have a few babies in there these are pretty shy well, as well as the signatas they're pretty shy this is a pair of um, uh, can never remember the, these guys but I have another pair of them as well I need a I try to make a pair of pearlies but the female is a little too aggressive for this male so I need, so I need to take them out this is uh, another pair of golds they haven't, I haven't seen any babies from them yet uh, more similis similis the signatas <coughs> but yeah that's uh, how I select my pairs I just let nature do its course let's work for you that way the fish don't get stressed out same thing for the calvis I buy 10 15 of them let them grow out and around this size they start pairing off I threw in that cave I think I have one or two more caves calvis caves that I should throw in there that way I have another pair of that timber wall <clears throat> but I was seeing to be a little bit more aggressive towards the rest something's going on between those three right there so they might pair up be paired up since the others are darker and these are lighter that's how I choose my pairs or multis they breed in colonies as well as uh, similis this uh, multi breeding colony I separate them separated them because they had a lot of babies so I threw some in here this is another colony oh this is the uh, ornatus that's what they're called this is a pair of them and they have a couple babies there's one right there and then the rest are over here by the filter there's one there's one on top and there's a few hiding in the filter but those as well I bought them from a breeder I grew them out and then they started to pair off by themselves in here actually I have to throw a cave in here that way if there's another pair I could separate them and start breeding them these are all pearlies. I think I still have around 150, 200 of them. These are the golds. I have three tanks, four tanks of golds growing out. And beerus. 
but there's one, two, three golds. These are pearly, pearly. And then on the other side, I have one more tank of golds and some more calvis growing out. There's some more carapuntatus growing out in here as well. And in some of these, it's same batch or multiple batches together. Since I have the shop now, I can set up more tanks. That way they're species only. Before, we had them in the 20 gallons and we had them all mixed. Golds, pearlies, carapuntatus, helianthus, all together growing out. But that's how I'm able to have large number of shell dwellers. That's how I do it. This is a really, really good pair of gracilis, gracilis. These guys are also, they're good. There's two different batches in here. Some of the slightly bigger ones and then the ones closer to the parents are the younger ones. But these guys, well, actually, I'll just show you. The ones in here, it's four, it's four different batches of babies. They're all around the same size now. But these were with the parents. It was four different batches. That's what I do to breed uh, all my fish and have the higher success rate for them. Later on, I'll make a separate video on how to breed um, peacocks, probably. It's basically the same thing. That's my male ruby red. I have another male in there. My male Lingara. And I can sell the breeding groups. They'll just be pricey. Like just the male Lingara. If anyone wants to buy them, I'd sell them for 150 I bought around 10 males and chose the best one out of 10. Same thing for the ruby reds. I had around 8, 10 males. And out of those, 8 or 10, I kept the best for breeding. That's what you have to do for peacocks, haps, and bunas. You have to choose the best, the most colorful male. Uh, there's a few different body shapes, but I'll get into that when I make a video for them. But that's it. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, message me. You can call, text. Um, text me uh, through either YouTube or Facebook. Usually Facebook works the best. I always have the phone on me. Sometimes I do get distracted doing water change or doing something else here at the store. But that's pretty much it. See you guys later.